morning everybody Todd metalhead weatherman here hopefully everyone's doing well today last night got pretty busy towards the end we were looking at a high risk and staring down into the abyss so to speak but things at first weren't too bad it was really not until the end where we got some pretty significant weather and unfortunately a very sad situation out of Barnsdall and Bartleville is a violent tornado would go through at night and unfortunately there were people that did not make it through the storm there is however another risk for severe weather today which we're going to go over so we're going to keep the ball rolling here we do have active severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings ongoing right now as we speak even right towards the Missouri and Illinois line. So we're not far away from St. Louis here with this current tornado warning. We're actually just off to the northwest where the warning is, if, I remember, if I'm correct here. So definitely still need to be on guard as we head into the afternoon here. But our enhanced risk is actually going to end up being for the Ohio Valley today. So anywhere from Louisville all the way through Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, all the way into Ohio with Columbus, Springfield, Cincinnati, and even uh, towards Evansville, Indiana, we need to be on the lookout for an increased tornado threat because that's going to be the main threat for today. 10% hatch risk of tornadoes, so there is a chance of a strong one or two. We also have increased hail threat with also a 15% hatch risk and also a 15% threat in general for damaging winds as well so everything is on the table here folks we do have this trough here this was the reason for our setup yesterday pretty good negative tilt here and as we continue to go forward this trough becomes almost i would say cut off at this point by the by the time we get in the afternoon as we continue to go forward here, I do see signs of a little bit of diffluence here. So by the time we get towards about maybe six o'clock, these storms will start to fire. This puts me in a weird spot because I did have something I may have to do today. I'm still kind of on the fence about if, I, if I'm going to be able to pull it off or not. But depending on how things play out, I may try to cancel it so I can cover this. Kind of don't want to, but. I'll do it for you guys. But in any case, though, it looks like the Ohio Valley and Indiana here look like the point of interest as we get later into the evening. Don't know how long this event necessarily runs, necessarily. But it does look like just before sunset, things start to ramp up. And as we get into the nighttime hours, as we push further to the east, the threat should start to diminish from that point here. We'll just kind of have to wait and see how things pan out with that setup. But definitely thinking towards central and eastern Indiana is where we're going to probably have our initiation start at. And then if we go ahead and take a look at the mid-levels here, looking at our short wave, we're going to just kind of fast forward a little bit. It does look like we end up seeing some pretty impressive action over here right around the six o'clock time frame or maybe five o'clock central time frame because we're pretty much right on the line between central and eastern time here as we get towards eastern parts of indiana here heading into western parts of ohio so time zone may get a little finicky as far as the forecast is concerned we may have to give or take an hour on this one but the evidence of shortwave is definitely there we also have Differing speeds at different heights, of course. Then, of course, we also have to take a look at wind direction, which is another parameter that further interests me. I'm gonna go back. I'm definitely seeing a little bit of a linear look here, but I do think embedded supercells are very much possible as well. Convective mode is pretty much gonna be everything with today's setup in general. So we go to 1820Z at the low level jet. We have our directional shear once again, and we also have our speed shear. R again, right on that Ohio Indiana line here is going to be where the greatest threat for tornadoes as we get later into the evening. We'll see that threat push off to the east right around and just after sunset. 
And of course, after that point, we'll start to see things begin to calm down as we get later and later into the evening here. So taking a look at our surface dew points, surface moisture is key to a lot of our setup today. And of course, we're going to have plentiful moisture. This one thing that we're not going to be worrying about at all this week, pretty much, is going to be lack of moisture from the Gulf. We're going to be dealing with pretty much a full on hose in effect here coming from the Gulf. Like the hose is not getting turned off. We're getting into the mid 60s with dew points the further to the east we go. So, yeah, like I said, no reason for me to believe that as far as moisture and temperatures are concerned, we should have a problem with severe weather. Here's some of the surface temperatures while we're at it. So we get later into the evening, we're in the mid 60s, we're in the upper 60s, mid 70s even at that point too. So like I said, numbers are right where they would need to be for severe weather. Looking at our precipitable water, we're mainly going to be looking for high precipitation supercells at this juncture. I don't expect to see too much in the way of photogenic LP storms. I expect things to be kind of messy today. Just like how it started to get kind of messy as we got later into the evening towards Oklahoma and parts of Kansas, Missouri. We're going to see pretty much a similar deal here. So a couple other things we'll look at, of course, instability, for example. We're going to move this right up to about peak time, which would be about 22 to 23 Z here we have really impressive instability about 3,000 joules per kilogram still a very explosive environment we have two thousands here towards central Ohio as we get right towards sunset so we're, like I said we're right where we want to be once again so with those numbers here we'll take a look at in particular the significant tornado parameter since this is the main threat once again today and while, yes, the values are not going to be the same as what we saw yesterday, we still have some pretty high values. We have some fours, probably even a few fives and sixes sprinkled in there. I'm going to go ahead and actually take a look at this sounding. And we have yet another PDS sounding, just like yesterday. Lapse rates aren't as high, so I'm thinking the hail threat may not be as significant, of course, as yesterday. Don't expect to see much in the way of 4-inch hail, but we could see some hail greater than 2 inches in diameter here. As far as the hodiograph is concerned, 0-3 to three looks pretty solid. Far cry from yesterday, but still very much dangerous. A lot of energy in the atmosphere still. Sufficient lift, sufficient shear especially towards the lower levels of the atmosphere. And everything else kind of checks out with this. I do think that there are some chances for some stronger tornadoes as we get later into the evening. Here's when those values really start to peak. And this is usually around the time where the low level jet starts to really kick in. But we're pretty much seeing the same thing here. Plenty of shear. Lift index isn't crazy. Zero to three transition isn't insane, but you can definitely tell that it's there. That low level shear is definitely what stands out to me. Threshold number is about 20 knots for a surface to one kilometer. We're at 33. So like I said, right where you would want to be if you're looking for some stronger tornadoes here. Do I think they'll be long track? Mm, kind of leaning against it right now, but of course this can uptrend, this can downtrend. Then around, also, around the same time, we're gonna take a look towards central Ohio. The shear here looks a little bit more impressive. The transition is looks good on the uh, hodiograph at the very least. Well, like I said, we'll just really have to see how things pan out. This could uptrend, and this could downtrend, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. Some pretty impressive analogs with that as well. So we continue to go on here. We even see those uh, parameters kind of ramp up over here towards Kentucky and Tennessee. We do have some pretty good numbers over here. This is right on the Tennessee, Kentucky line. Do see a tag for a significant supercell as well. Lift index looks good. And once again, wind profile looks pretty impressive there. But in any case though, 
we're going to go ahead and finally take a look at what our simulated radar could look like. We could be dealing with a late evening and maybe even nocturnal threat as well as we go through the day here and into the night. See that main line from yesterday kind of weaken. It goes through the area, almost kind of acts like a outflow boundary for these new storms to fire. We do look like we get an early start time. And then as we continue to go forward here, from 22Z onward, you do see the look for discrete supercells. And maybe in the midst of that, we might get a line to form later with embedded supercells in there as well. So could see multiple convective modes, maybe even line segments with embedded supercells as we get into the night here. So very dangerous look once again today. We will be live to cover this from what I've seen here. So I'm just going to... What I was doing wasn't really that important. This is something I wanted to do, but I'll cover this for you guys. I'm more than happy to do it. But till then, I will see you guys later. And I hope you guys have a nice, safe rest of your day. Tire Metalhead Weatherman signing off for now.